Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Scott. Today, we're going to be painting a fun model. This model might just have become my new favorite model. This is the Break a Boss on Meyer Brute Trogoth. This is part of Age of Sigmar, and it's part of the Auric War Clans army. It's a fun model with lots of personality and lots of fun colors. So let's go ahead and dive into how I painted this model. So let's dive right into this model. To start off, we're going to base coat the entire model with Fenrisian Grey. This is going to give a light blue, like baby blue, sky blue color to the model. We've done this over a white base coat, and this is to help the color come out brighter. Once that base coat is dried, we're going to use Rakar Flesh. We're going to highlight the belly and the neck as well as areas of the face. We're also going to highlight some random spots on his arms. Spots that we think might get more wear or tear. And you could really just do this wherever you want. This is where you establish the patterning you want for your Trogoth. Once that's dried, we're going to shade all of the tan flesh with Agrax Earthshade. Go ahead and let this pool up, but not too heavily. You want to spread it out enough that it doesn't look unnatural. He is a Trogoth, but he's not that ugly. Once that's dried, we're going to use Coelia Green Shade, and we're going to shade this all over all the blue areas that we painted previously. This is going to give kind of a teal color to the skin, and it's going to help make it look very similar to what you see on the box art. In fact, if you wanted to, you could just leave the model like this, and it would look fairly similar to the colors you see in the box. Once our shade is dried, we're going to go back through with Fenrisian Grey. We're going to start picking out the highlighting on the flesh. And to do this, we're going to focus on anywhere that has like scales or different rolls of flesh. We're going to pick out the raised surfaces, but leave the shade in the recesses. Now when you get to areas like the feet, uh, the, uh, specifically around the ankles and the wrists, go ahead and do horizontal lines, little small ones, and leave gaps between them. This will enhance the appearance of there being layers of skin there. We're going to do a very similar process now with Rakarth Flesh, layering back over the belly and any of the areas we've done in tan. We're going to focus again just on the most raised areas. We're trying to really define the muscle here. Just like before, we're going to use small horizontal lines on all of the arms, anywhere there's rolls of flesh. We're trying to, like I said before, enhance the appearance of there being different rolls in his flesh different creases, and there are a lot sculpted into the model, but we're trying to go beyond just what's sculpted onto the model. Once we're done with that, we're going to take Karek Stone, and we're going to paint this on the skin that's hanging around the waist of the Trogoth. We're going to be careful not to get this on the skin that we've painted previously, because we don't want to have to go back through and redo that. Once that tan color is dried, we're going to take Contrast Skeleton Horde. We're going to just wash this all over the animal hide. You can go as heavy as you'd like with this. In fact, I recommend the closer you get to the armor plate, the heavier you should go with this. Now while that's drying, we're going to take Contrast Volupus Pink, and we're just going to paint this over the flesh of the ears. We're going to do our best here. We've also kind of thinned this down with some water, and that's an important step. If you don't thin this down, it's going to be too thick, and it's going to overpower the tan that's underneath this pink. Now we're going to go through with Karek Stone. We're going to paint all the wooden areas on the clubs. We're going to focus on not getting this on his hands. We're doing a light color for this because we want the wood to look like it's rotten, maybe even a little bit petrified. Now once that's dried, we're going to take a Thonian Camo Shade, and we're going to shade this all over the clubs. This is going to give the wood a somewhat green color to it. It's going to make it look kind of rotten and old, like it's been sitting in the swamp. And that's exactly the look we want to go for.
Once the shade is dried, we're going to take Rakarth Flesh. We're going to dry brush this all over the animal skin that's hanging around his waist. We're also going to dry brush this onto the wood of the clubs. This is going to further enhance that kind of old, rotten look that we want the wood to have. Now at this point, I do my orc skin. I'm not going to show how to do that in this video, but if you'd like to know how to paint orc skin, check out my other video, How to Paint Orc Skin. Now with the orc skin done, we're going to take Contrast Volupus Pink. We're going to paint this just on the brand that's on the back of the hide. And once again, we've watered this down. Now we're going to start painting the armor panel on the front of this model. We're going to use Screaming Bell. This is a somewhat red tinted metal color. We're going to paint this just all over that armor panel. We're going to be careful not to get this on the animal hide, nor on the Trogoth skin. There's also an armor panel on the orc. We'll paint that at this time as well. Now we're going to shade those armor panels using Cardboard Crimson. This is going to give the armor a somewhat orange or red color to it. From some angles it may even look a little bit purple. And this is exactly the look we want to go for. Once we've allowed that shade to dry, we're going to take Mephiston Red. At this point we're going to start painting over the colors we've previously done but we're going to leave all the edges with that metal color that's underneath. Our goal is to go for this look as if the paint has chipped off or worn off from this troll just living in the swamp. So you want that metal to show through. Now we're going to go through with Retributor Armor. We're going to paint the eye on this armor panel using this color. It's going to give it a very bright golden look and it's going to pop and draw a lot of attention to that part of the model. Once that's dried, we're going to take Cassandora Yellow, this is a shade paint, we're going to shade this all over the golden eye. And then we're going to take Nylac Oxide, we're just going to put this in a couple spots where we feel like water might pool on this model's armor. This is to represent the appearance of rust, as if some of the copper armor underneath is heavily rusting. At this point, we're going to take Canoptic Alloy, and we're going to use this to edge highlight the eye on the armor panel. And you're just going to pick out the areas that you feel would catch the light the most. Now we're going to take Rhinox Hide, and we're going to start picking out the leather pad that is on the back of this Trogoth. You're going to be careful not to get this on the animal skin that he's using to hang around his waist. You're also going to pick out the robes that are on the orc. Once you've done that, we're going to take Carrick Stone. We're going to pick out the cloth that is sitting underneath the orc, as well as the fur that is on top of his robes. Now we're going to take Mornfang Brown and we're going to use this color to paint the wooden post that is holding the orc up. We're also going to pick out all of the ropes and straps that are on the model. There's a handful across his chest holding his armor on. There's also a handful that are just randomly scattered across the model. Once that's done, we're going to take Agrax Earthshade and we're going to just wash this over all the areas we've just painted with the different shades of brown. You can go ahead and go as heavy as you'd like on this. And I even went as far as to do two coats on the wooden post. Now we're going to go through with Mornfang Brown. We're just going to do a light stipple dash dry brush effect on the leather parts. And this is just going to give that leather a more worn, natural look. Now we're going to go through, and this time we're going to dry brush Rackarth Flesh. We're going to go vertically with the grain of the wood on this post. 
we're gonna go really heavy. In fact, I almost went a little too heavy in some areas. And if you do go too heavy, go ahead and just clean that up later using the same base color that you did underneath the dry brush. Now we're gonna go ahead and use lead belter. We're gonna pick out all of the chains, the points of all the weapons. There's some metal beams that are wrapped around his clubs. Anything that you think should be this silver color. Now we're going to shade all of the metal using Ethonian Camo Shade. This is going to give all of the silver a kind of swampy green look to it. It's going to make it look very dirty and worn. And it's going to help it kind of blend into our swamp theme. We're going to begin painting all the armor. We're going to use Balthazar Gold for this. We're just going to paint this over all the armor panels that are on this model. And just be careful not to get this on any of the details around the armor. We're also going to go through with Wraith Bone. We're going to pick out all the bone that is spread across the model. Now he's got a, a jaw bone that he's wearing as a faceplate on his head. There's also a couple bones and skulls that hang from the clothing of the Trogoth. You just go over the model and find any bone you can find and paint it at this point. And we're gonna take Agrax Earthshade and we're gonna shade all the bone we just painted. And it's okay to go kind of heavy on this. We're also gonna shade his teeth, which we picked out in the previous step, and any of his armor panels that we painted with that Balthazar Gold. Once that's dried, we're going to pick out the hair of the Trogoth using Death Guard Green. Once again, we're going for that kind of moldy, sloth-style hair that you'd expect to see on something that's lived in a swamp. Now we're going to go through with Coelia Green Shade, and we're going to shade all of this hair. This is going to give the hair a very teal color, and it's going to help it look very kind of rotten and swampy. Now we're going to go through and we're going to highlight all of the armor using Retributor Armor. This is a gold color, it's very shiny, now we're not painting this all over. We're leaving gaps so that the metal color comes out uneven and weathered looking. Now we're going to take Averlin Sunset, and we're just going to pick out the eyes of the Trogoth. I think you want to be very careful with this step. You don't want to get this yellow on any of the skin. So just take your time, be very careful with it, and be prepared to do some cleanup with your skin colors afterwards. Now, we're going to take Abaddon Black. I'm just going to put a dot in the center of the eye. We're only doing this on his left eye, because the right eye is squinted a little bit too much for us to be able to get the brush in there. We're also going to take this black and we're going to paint all of his toenails and his fingernails with this color. Finally, we're going to use Dawnstone. We're just going to do a very small highlight on each of the toes and claws. Um, we're just going to do little straight lines. We're just going to extend part way up each toenail. With that, we finished our troca. Thanks so much for watching today, guys. If you've liked this video, go ahead and hit that like button, and subscribe to my channel so you can see future videos. Then let me know in the comments, are you going to include one of these Trogoths in your orc army? We'll see you next time. Have a great day.